Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today I'm answering your questions. The questions today are all about biblical way of eating. What is the best way to eat according to God's plan? These are really good thought out questions and I'm really excited that you asked them. If you would like your question answered here on this video or in our private Facebook group, go to our Facebook group, Biblical Nutrition Academy and sign up. When you sign up, we're gonna ask you, what is your question? I look forward to meeting you there in that group. And it is a very vibrant and growing group. So it's an exciting place to be. So let me start answering your questions, but yet let me share with you a surprise. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give away a gift. And the gift is going to a name that we pulled from the people who have left reviews on Barnes & Noble or on Amazon. So if you have left a review of one of our books on one of those sites, then be paying attention because you may be getting a gift. And today's gift is our GBX protein. It is totally my favorite protein. And I love it because it just has a creaminess to it. It's easy to mix with anything, any fruits or vegetables. It's just, and very satisfying. And I also want purity. That's always important too. So stay tuned to the end to see if you were able to win that gift today. Now, let me start answering your questions. We have all questions about biblical way of eating. So first we have to decide. Second, we discover. And third, we appreciate. So decide. I knew in my heart that there was a better way and I was not sure I was ready, but I knew God created me. I knew God gave us delicious foods and I knew he is, is and always will be the Rafa healer. Yesterday, today, yes, forever. From there, I had to make a decision. Would I trust him? Would I surrender my addictions to food and sugar and trust him for something better? Well, I delayed this decision until we were in a crisis and then I was hit hard make a decision or just continue down the road that's most traveled with sickness, medication, surgery, medication, sickness. It's, it's a spiral. It's like getting on one of those clover overpasses on the highway and never getting off the circular ramps, just going around, going around, going around. My mom, she enjoyed following the teachings of Hallelujah Acres, and she wanted me to do that as well. Now, I believe their teaching brings great healing, yet it kind of condone the scriptures except for Genesis 129. I mean, Genesis 129 was the beginning and end. I knew there was more and I knew Jesus, Jesus ate different foods than that. So my journey brought me to a moment of decision. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. That's a song we should bring back. I had to decide, yes, God knew what was right. Man imitates and manipulates. So when I discovered the three principles, I knew they were truth. I knew eat the foods that God called good, which means excellent of its kind. Number two, eat the foods as close to his design before they're being altered beyond our blessing. And number three, don't let any food become an idol or an addiction or a small God. This was truth. It includes Genesis 129, but it includes many other scriptures as well. It's balanced on what Jesus ate. Second, we started discovering. We discovered the good, which means excellent of its kind, and we let those foods bring the healing that we needed. Cholesterol dropped from 300 to 140 in one month. Triglycerides dropped from 900 to 160 in one month. The same one, same month. Weight went down, cancer has not returned, and many more health challenges are no longer a challenge. And we started with the Daniel Fast to do that. Every meal was my goal to see how many foods I could relate a story in scripture and serve my family. Okay, so first, decide, make a decision. Second, discover, and then third, appreciate. We get off track when we no longer appreciate all that God has done, and we look for fillers. Well, fillers for our emotions and desires or our comfort, that's not going to work. Scripture teaches us about the desires of our heart. When they are in agreement with God's word and his ways, it's a blessing. Eating his foods, real natural foods, close to his design for our body, that says thanks in less inflammation, less complaining, no more constipation, less disease, and more satisfied. Our mind says thanks. 
with less depression, less mood, less mood swings, less aggravation, and gives us happiness, enjoyment of life, complete satisfaction. That's the difference. That's why we choose. Eating God's way is recognizing that His plans are best. It's seeing Him in every single decision we make, even feeding our body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is alive in us and giving Him the glory. I would start with the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study and just delve into it. Just really see what does God's Word say. Or go to the Daniel Fast, either the book or the courses, and it's going to help you to understand even more of what the Bible says about food and God's ways. And they're both informative, they're both enlightening. So two options to help get you started. Question number two, how do you transition from the Daniel Fast? This was submitted by Melissa. First, congratulations on considering and possibly doing the Daniel Fast. The comments that we get on a daily basis from people doing this course, it just makes my day. I love reading what God is doing. Seeing God at work is always such a blessing. Now, we transition in many ways. First, take some time, 15, 60 minutes, and, and ask, what was the best part of the Daniel Fast? What foods did you discover that you liked? What recipes did you find that were totally delicious? And I hope you use some of the recipes in our course, the Daniel Fest course, because we have three new weeks of menus and recipes. Oh, they're extremely good. Review your journal of all that God taught you and then decide what are you going to continue? What recipes are you going to uh, bring into your main menu? What are your main menu planning? What are you going to do? What thoughts have you now put in place that keep your fear and other debilitating thoughts totally away? So you would keep those in your forefront of your mind. What beliefs do you now have that have been transferred to biblical truths? You keep those promises in front of you. Now, it is okay to add meats back in. I would add them in a, in a couple of times, like maybe the first week you have it twice a week. Then the second week you'll have it three to four times after having meat dishes in your plan. Now, during the Daniel Fest, it's common to learn that some foods were causing you problems. So these foods that you've identified, you might want to add them in every three days so that you can kind of make a final analysis if they truly are problem foods or food sensitivities. And if they are, then we need to eliminate them for a couple more weeks, try it again. And if we still can't digest them, then we need to leave them off our plate for about a year. Many times we no longer have good enzyme production in the pancreas to process certain foods, or they've become an allergy due to a leaky gut. Remember, that's all about that microbiome. So three weeks of eating this way has the ability to heal the lining of the gut, and it definitely changed your microbiome. So the microbiome is reflective of what you've been eating for the last three to 10 days. So adding in foods that you eliminate may cause problems at first, and if so, wait and add them again, maybe later next week. Okay, so here's the bottom line. Add foods in slowly, one at a time, and use this time to discover food sensitivities. And then learn if you just need to add enzymes to help metabolize, and if you need to, uh, for, maybe even forget a food for a period of time. And that's how you would ease back into a normal diet. Question number three, I've had some success losing weight by being disciplined about what I eat. I had cut out carbs and sugars. However, over the last two years, I have slacked and regained much of the weight. I would like to redo this, but I wanna do it God's way. This was submitted by you. Okay, let's start with identifying why you changed your eating. What was going on in your life? What was the draw to certain foods? Use the Hunger Satisfied Journal. This is so pivotal to your success. Record what you eat and why you ate it. I want you to plan your foods 24 hours in advance. I want you to do this before changing your diet. I want you to discover the why, and the why is key to never going on a diet ever again. Once we learn our thoughts and identify the thoughts that are causing you to go to food instead of something else, that when you're in trouble or by just by habit, many times it's just habits that are causing us to trip. So we need to conquer this. So start with journaling, what you eat, why you eat it. Next, use the journal, Hunger Satisfied Journal, to record your thoughts. What, what was going on? Where were you when you ate? Was there something else going on? Or do you just have some habits that really make this, they make you think that you, know, you need to have popcorn at the movies or you need to have a bag of chips when you sit down for dinner um, or TV at night? 
Record everything. Record it as if you are detached from it and read it. We heal the mind first and then the stomach will follow. We don't start with the stomach because the mind argues. We eat by voluntary muscles. This means that we can control it. Yet, first, let's see what's happening in your mind. When our mindset is in agreement with God's word and not just a check the box Christian. Now, I mean a Christian who says, Lord, show me my thoughts that are inhibiting my success and seeing you alive in all areas of my life. That's the type of Christian who sees the results. That is when your self-discipline will be easier to manage. It will still be a battle until you conquer it. But God says in his word that he will fight for us. He conquered Satan once and for all. It's up to us to let that ring true in our own lives. Self-discipline is not simply an exercise in self-improvement. It actually is an essential discipline and it's, it's like a high stakes spiritual battle, as one author put it. The only possible attitude toward out of control desires is to declare war against it. Now keep in mind, the battle is not bad and being in a battle is not wrong. The battle says, Lord, I desire you in all areas of my life. Therefore, I am armed and ready. I will fight this battle of the mind. I'm going to win this battle because Lord, you've already won this battle. The battle is good. The fight itself brings glory to him. In Exodus 3, God said that he would bring them out of the land of the Egyptians and he would bring them to the promised land. So he's going to do the same for you. Learn to identify why you slacked and then turn it around into giving God the glory as you overcome this by his power. Be prepared for battle and be prepared to win. All right, question number four. What does the biblical food pyramid look like? This was submitted by Ruby. Another good question. So in scripture, there is no food pyramid. Yet we can use scripture to discover the foods that God brought to us to enjoy to be a blessing. Now it starts with Genesis 1 29, every seed bearing plant. And then after the garden, they were made to make their own bread by the sweat of their brow. Okay. So no longer would foods be in the garden, be free and easy. Now they're going to take work. And if you want to eat, you're going to have to work. So I see a pyramid with the seed bearing plants being pretty much the major food that we consume. And then adding in the bread, freshly milled, of course, never store bought. And from there, we see other scriptures that talk about sweets, honey from honeycomb, honey from date. Even a honey can be made of a, from a syrup from the grapes or the pomegranates. Part of the seven foods, which I just have to get that in. Oils can be added in from the olive oil. They can be pressed. We can add in meats because Jesus ate meat, um, but it's clean meats. He ate, you know, fish. He ate lamb. And this is perfect. So your pyramid would be seed bearing foods topped with whole grains, added on some clean meats and some sweets. And then don't forget the oil. We need the olive oil to just lubricate our life, both spiritually and physically. Now, I share this type of a pyramid in the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study, and you study it there. And we also have a nice painting for this, for those who purchased the full leader study kit, we give them a painting. So, our winner today is Maggie. Maggie left a review on Amazon for one of our books, and we so appreciate this, Maggie. So, Maggie, if you live in the U.S., I'm going to be sending you the GVX protein. You just need to email us at Annette at thebiblicalnutritionist.com. And our assistant is going to ask you for the code. The code is QA75. Maggie, you have 60 days from the post notes video to be sent this delicious gift, our GBX protein, a very creamy flavor, great texture, very satisfying too. So I can have it for breakfast and not be hungry for four or five hours. So I love that. I have a busy schedule. I also add this protein powder into some of my baked goods. So I hope you enjoy it, Maggie. If you want to check out the protein, I'll put a link to it down below. If you're like, I don't want to wait to win, <laughs> just give me the protein. Be sure you go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble if you want to leave a review to be entered and we will be giving this away quite often. Thanks for watching this video and letting me share from my heart the re God's recipe for excellent health. And you matter to me. You matter. You matter to God. You matter to me. And I want to be your friend. I want to be your girlfriend, your mother, your mother-in-law, whatever you need in your life to fill a void. I want to be there for you to help you discover God's recipe for excellent health. And more importantly, to feel the confidence of knowing how much he loves you. Thanks for watching.